Barakatha Yahweh, Barakatha Yahweh Shai, Kol Halayim La Yahweh, Bahasham Yahweh Shai, Bracha Kodash, which means all praises to Yahweh is the name of the Heavenly Father. Bahasham means in the name. Yahweh Shai is the name of His only begotten Son, who the world ignorantly called Jesus Christ. Bracha Hakodash means in the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of Truth, on the way we can worship the Father and the Son. Double honors to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone. Peace, blessings, and salutations to all you brothers who preach in the gospel and truth and in sincerity. Always in charity. This is Brother Mathathi from the Great Millstone Camp, the branch on Des Moines. And um, not sure what I'm going to title this lesson just yet, but it's inspired through the Holy Spirit um, from our camp read this week, which is um, the book of Sirach. And um, it's a, this particular uh, chapter and verse here, this is Sirach 11 and 3. It says, The bee is little among such as fly, but her fruit is the chief of sweet things. You know, and you could look at all the uh, different things that fly, you know, from you got different uh, 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 types of birds, you know, uh, golden eagles, bald eagles, different type of vultures, you know, grasshoppers and different things. <laughs> And compared to and, and, and comparing the bee to those different things, man, it's very little. Right. But it says, but her fruit is the chief of sweet things, man, is <laughs> the chief of sweet things. And that's what the bee produces. The bee, the bee produces honey. You know, and I want to liken, you know, this bee and this and, and how it produces honey unto the men of the Lord. Because within this society. We are looked at as a little thing, right? We're looked at as a small thing. This is the book of uh, 1 Corinthians. It might be 4, it might be the first chapter. Yeah, it's the first chapter, it's lucky. It's 1 Corinthians 1. And 20, it says, where is the wise? Where is the scribe? Where is the disputer of this world? Have not the Most High made foolish the wisdom of this world? For after that in the wisdom of the Most High, for after that in the wisdom of the Most High, the world by wisdom knew not the Most High. It pleased the Most High by the foolishness of preaching to save them that believe. So it's going into, you know, the society, right? And how it pushes science, The Big Bang evolution and all that madness, man. So when it comes to the men of the Lord, when it comes to us out there in the highways and hedges, we looked at as being foolish. Right. But it says, verse 22, for the Jews require a sign and the Greeks seek after wisdom. But we preach you how a shot crucified unto the Jews, a stumbling block and unto the Greeks foolishness. Um, let me jump down. Verse 26. For ye see your calling, brethren, how that many, how that not many wise men after the flesh, not many mighty, not many noble are called. And it's going into what? According to this society, man, right? Verse 27. But the most I have chosen the foolish things of the world to confound the wise. And the most I have chosen the weak things of the world to confound the things that are which are mighty. And base things of the world and things which are despised have the most high chosen, yea, and things which are not to bring to naught things that are, that no flesh should glory in his presence. So in, within this society, we are looked at as insignificant, as you can see the definition here. It says too small or unimportant to be worth consideration. <laughs> And this is this this is how this society views the men of the Lord. This is how they view us. And this is exactly how this society view bees. Because when you look at this society and how it's put, it don't, it don't it don't respect the bee. It don't understand the importance that a bee has on an environment, man. And it's the same thing as today. These people don't understand the importance and the effect that the prophets have. <laughs> right? Because going back to the precept, to rock 11 and 3, the bee is little among such as fly, but her fruit is the chief of sweet things. So we might be considered the base and the low within the society, but our fruit, right? Which what's our fruit? This is the book of uh, 
Because the fruit of the bee is what? His honey. This is the book of Psalms. Matter of fact, I'll get this one here. Psalms 19. And I'll start at 8. The fear of Yahweh Basham Yahweh Shah is clean. I'm sorry, verse 9. The fear of Yahweh Basham Yahweh Shah is clean, enduring forever. The judgments of the Lord are true and righteous altogether. More to be desired are they than gold, yea, than much fine gold, sweeter also than honey and the honeycomb. You see, it tells us here in Psalms 119 and 103, how sweet are thy words unto my taste, yea, sweeter than honey to my mouth. So here it is. Yahweh Basham Yahweh Shai have to chosen these little things, right? Us being compared to the bee. Within this society, something that's insignificant within this society, something that's base and weak within this society. And yet, look at what he allowing us to produce through his Holy Spirit. Right? There's another one in Proverbs uh, 24. Proverbs 24. And 13, my son, eat thou honey because it is good and the honeycomb, which is sweet to thy taste. So shall the knowledge of wisdom be unto thy soul when thou hast found it. Then there shall be a reward and thy expectation shall not be cut off. You see. So this is how wisdom is to us. So the Lord has given us the ability to produce this honey. Honey being in the form of what? This, this knowledge. This is the book of Ezekiel. Three and one. Moreover, he said unto me, son of man, eat that thou findest. Eat this roll and go speak unto the house of Israel. So I opened my mouth and he caused me to eat that roll. And he said unto me, son of man, cause thy belly to eat and fill thy bowels with this roll that I give thee. Then did I eat it and it was in my mouth as honey for sweetness. So this doctrine, this knowledge, the words of Yahweh Basham Yahweh Shah that he have put inside our mouths, as it is written in the book of Second Edges. This word which he has entrusted us with. He has put within us so that we're able to produce the chief thing of the earth, which is this knowledge. Second Edges 15 and one. Behold, speak thou in the ears of my people, the words of prophecy, which I will put in thy mouth, saith the Lord and cause them to be written in paper for they are faithful and true. And what is this word doing for our people, man? Specifically for those that believe this is the book of uh, Samuel. Hold on. Is the book of 1 Samuel 14 and 27. But Jonathan heard not when his father charged the people with the oath. Wherefore, he put forth the end of the rod that was in his hand and dipped it in a honeycomb and put his hand to his mouth and his eyes were enlightened. So what it literally did, right, because this literally took place when Jonathan ate the honey. He got refreshed. His body received the nutrients and the minerals it needed. So it recharged him. But we're applying this in the spirit. When we eat the honeycomb via this knowledge, not via, <laughs> when we eat the honeycomb, which is this knowledge, we become enlightened, as it tells us here in the book of Baruch. This is Baruch 4 and 1. This is the book of the commandments of the Most High and the law that endureth forever. All they that keep it shall come to life, but such as leave it shall die. Turn thee, O Jacob, and take hold of it. Walk in the presence of the lot thereof, that thou mayest be illuminated. You see? That we may be enlightened. Right? That we may walk in the presence of the light thereof, man, as the scripture just told us. Walking in the knowledge of Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shah, and then in turn, being able to shot that light unto the next man. You see? Because within this society, we are looked at as insignificant, unimportant, or small, too small to be considered. But in the eyes of Yahweh Basham Yahweh Shah, in the eyes from, uh, of heaven, we can't be, we're, we're, we're not to be compared to nothing on this earth. This is Sirach 25 and 9. Well, it's him that hath found prudence, and he that speaketh in the ears of them that will hear. Oh, how great is he that findeth wisdom, yet is there none above him that feareth the Lord. But the love of the Lord passeth all things for illumination. He that holdeth it, whereto shall he be likened, man. You see? Because once again, within this society, we are looked at as nothing. 
and, and, and Satan to come and try to put those thoughts in our mind, man. Try to tell us that we're insignificant, try to tell us that that we're not important. But we have to remember. Yahweh Basham Yahweh saw fit to give us this knowledge, to gift us, right? With the gift of the Holy Spirit in order to do what? It's the book of uh, Isaiah 49. And five. And now saith Yahweh Basham Yahweh that formed me from the womb to be his servant, to bring Jacob again to him, though Israel be not gathered. Yet shall I be glorious in the eyes of Yahweh Basham Yahweh Shai, and my power shall be my strength. You see that? So the Lord has called us for a purpose, man. He has put his Holy Spirit within us, right? He has given us the ability to produce that honey, the chief thing of the earth. In order to bring his people back unto him, because this is what's healing uh, 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 our people, man. It speaks about. Because honey, honey is used uh, uh, to heal. You could put it on cuts and it'll heal your cuts is used as, a, as an antibiotic, a disinfectant, <laughs> you know, um, manuka honey is uh, uh, you can ingest that and is used to purify and, and, and cleanse out the bad bacteria out of your body. Right. And that's exactly what the word does for us, man. What is that? Wisdom of Solomon. Wisdom of Solomon. What is that? 1626. Nope, let's go up. Verse 12. Wisdom of Solomon 16 and 12. For it was neither herb nor mollifying plaster that restored them to health, but thy word, O Yahweh Yahweh which healeth all things. You see? So the Lord has given us the ability to heal our people, man. <laughs> you know, just like bees, when you reintroduce bees into an environment and they start to uh, to pollinate the different plants, <laughs> you know, that 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 land becomes a, 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 um, um, abundant, for lack of a better word. That land starts to produce more. Which is why the Lord called our land, what? A land flowing with milk and honey. Why? Because it was abundant of cattle and bees. And that allowed our land to be um, fruitful, man. You see? Psalms 107 and 20. He sent his word and healed them and delivered them from their destructions. Man, Proverbs 16, 24, pleasant words are as a honeycomb, sweet to the soul and health to the bones, man. <laughs> you see that? So the water, Yahweh Basham, Yahweh Shai, man. And we got to remember our importance, you know? The job that Yahweh Basham, Yahweh Shai have entrusted us. I keep, I keep using that word entrusted because that's what Paul said. I think it's an I. Is it in trust? I know it says gospel. So lock your bread with me. Yep, that's that's it. First Thessalonians two and four. But as we were allowed of the most high to be put in trust with the gospel, even so we speak not as pleasing men, but the most high, which trieth our hearts, man. So ultimately, Yahweh Basham Yahweh Shah knows, right, the sincerity of each individual that's within his walk. You know, but the point being is that the Lord has put us in trust with the gospel. He has given us this ability to produce the chief thing. Once again, the water Yahweh Basham Yahweh Shai, man. You know? So no matter how the society views us, no matter what Satan comes and try to put within our minds, it's, it's a very important 
you know, very significant job that the Lord has called us to do. Right? Because we're the body of Yahweh Shah. It tells us in the book of Romans 12. It's Romans 12. And four, for as we have many members in one body and all members have not the same office. So we being many are one body in Hamashiach and every one members one of another, having then gifts differing according to the grace that is given to us, whether prophecy, let us prophesy according to the proportion of faith or ministry. Let us wait on our ministering or he that teacheth on teaching or he that exhorteth on exhortation. He that giveth, let him do it with simplicity. He that ruleth with diligence, he that showeth mercy with cheerfulness, man. Right? So we each have a role to play within this ministry. Just like when you uh, um, look at the bees and how they work, they have uh, different bees, have different jobs. You have the warrior bees, you have bees that go out and, you know, uh, 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 and pollinate and do certain things. Just like ants. Everybody has their function, but it's all what for the betterment of the body of the colony, right? This is first Corinthians 12 and four. Now there are diversities of gifts, but the same spirit and there are differences of administrations, but the same Lord and there are diversities of operations, but it is the same power which worketh all in all. But the manifestation of the spirit is given to every man to profit with them. You see, so each one of us is supposed to what? To be able to profit with it, man, because it tells us here in Ephesians four. This is Ephesians four. And 16 from whom the whole body fitly joined together and compacted by that which every joint supplieth, according to the effectual working in the measure of every part. Maketh increase of the body unto the edifying of itself in love. You see, which every joint supplieth, man. So whatever our role is, we're supposed to be what? Profiting, producing the chief thing. Which is what? The fruit of this understanding. In whatever capacity or whatever office we have within this. You know? Some brothers have a bigger portion. Some brothers have a smaller portion, but it's but it's just as important. Going back to this Corinthians 12, I'm going to jump down to the point. And uh, brothers can read this, this, this chapter. It's a beautiful chapter, too. Because he goes into, you know, how we're, we all have different portions, man. I'm going to start at uh, 22. It says, nay, much more those members of the body which seem to be more feeble are necessary. You see? So even brothers who have offices that seem like it's, it's, it's not really important within the ministry. No, they are more necessary. And those members of the body which we think to be less honorable upon these, we bestow more abundant honor and our uncomely parts have more abundant comeliness. For our comely parts have no need, but the Most High have tempered the body together, having given more abundant honor to that part which lacked, that there should be no schism in the body, but that the members should have the same care one for another, man. So once again, no matter our office or our role, our job is to what? To edify the body of our Lord Yahweh Shai. To produce the chief thing. You know, and ultimately the goal is so that we all can be delivered, you know. So, you know, I just wanted to, you know, there was something in my spirit. Like I said, uh, you know, I was going through, uh, you know, I was reading our camp read and that particular verse stuck out to me, you know. So, you know, Lord, well, I hope this was that I find the water Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shai for giving me the spirit to do this lesson. You know, we got to remember, man. Our role within this ministry of, is of the utmost importance, especially in the eyes of Yahweh Basham Yahweh Shai. You know? What manner of love that the Lord has bestowed upon us that we should be called the sons of the living power.
So once again, Lord will, I hope this was at a fine double honor to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone. Peace, blessings, and salutations to you, brothers, preaching the gospel and truth and the sincerity of all in charity. Shalom.